or you of all people would acknowledge that yeah. that having inflation under control is absolutely fundamental well certainly and that was the target that in government we had given the reserve bank of australia and its independence but but, but if that's the Kerry, case uh, dr but, nelson if but, if the Howard government had inflation under such tight control for all of its 11 years and you delivered the, the economy, including inflation, in such good shape, why were there 10 consecutive increases from May of 2002 until you left government and why is there now an 11th rate increase just a couple of months later? Well, Kerry, firstly, I don't think the average Australian is going to be too impressed if we keep talking only about the past. The important thing is what's happening today and the future as, as far as Australian families are concerned. But you but can't just be. take responsibility. You can't just take credit for the good things and not acknowledge those rate increases, can you? Well, Kerry, it shouldn't be for forgotten, as you reminded your uh, viewers in your introductory remarks, that when, we, when the Howard government came to office, it inherited uh, $96 billion in debt. In Got available. Well, there's just one other thing. Mr Rudd and Mr Swan were elected to take responsibility for this, not to complain about it. But you They've see, here you are, 11 and a half now. years after the last Labor government, still raising $96 billion of Labor debt in 1996. So that sounds, dare I suggest it, just a little bit hypocritical. Well, they're, they're not allowed to complain about you, but you're still complaining about them 11 and a half years ago. Well, Kerry, I don't want to get drawn into some sort of trivial uh, uh, semantic argument about this. I mean, the, okay. the important thing is, as every Australian knows, our economy was in terrific shape when it was handed over to Mr Rudd and Mr Swan, and they should yeah. be able to manage them. Mr Rudd, in fairness, outlined a five-point plan to tackle inflation just five or six days ago, or ten days ago now, and, uh, and what he is saying is that the inflation rate he inherited from your final months in office is at a 16-year high and that the Howard government presided over an inflationary build-up despite some 20 warnings from the Reserve Bank going back to 2005 uh, about, about uh, the risks posed by capacity constraints and bottlenecks in the economy. Shouldn't you and your former Cabinet colleagues take some responsibility for that? Well, we take responsibility, Kerry, for having given Mr Rudd and Mr Swan an economy that was in first-rate condition. Isn't it well, a fact that one of the reasons you lost office was because of the accumulated impact and pain on those very same mortgage holders of ten consecutive increase, uh, uh, rate increases in your time? Well, there's no question, uh, Kerry, that not one of us that has a mortgage or a car loan or a credit card, myself included, enjoys any kind of interest rate to rise at all. Can I bring you back to what the Reserve Bank itself has fingered as a primary cause of inflation and an ongoing one, and that is those same constraints in the economy caused by skill shortages and other bottlenecks that Mr Rudd says he is now acting on and that you ignored when you were in government? Well, it's an absolute nonsense to suggest that in some way they'd been ignored, uh, Kerry. We increased investment in skills by 85% real over more than a decade. I'd like to move on to the stolen generation uh, issue. Uh, on the Rudd plan to formally apologise to the stolen generation of Indigenous Australians in the new parliament next week, you seem to be have tr having trouble working out your position on this. As Liberal leader tomorrow, standing in front of your colleagues, Will you be showing leadership and telling them what you think you as a party should do in the parliament or will you be asking them to tell you what you should do? Well, it's firstly, Kerry, I will most certainly be telling them my view uh, and my strong belief in terms of what we will need to do. That will be informed in part, uh, I understand it, uh, by Mr Rudd giving me some indication as to precisely what we're being asked to agree to. One of the other things that is extremely important to me, Kerry, in my leadership is that the men and women whom I lead, in the Liberal Party in particular, and across the coalition come from the length and breadth of Australia. They reflect Australia. They reflect the diversity of opinion in this and many other issues. And wherever I possibly can, I will make sure that the first time that they hear what I believe we will need to do will come directly from me and not through some announcement uh, by media or newspaper or any other device. By the same this token, very... Dr Nelson, would you agree that all of your rhetoric on this issue since Kevin Rudd raised it has been negative? Every piece of rhetoric you have offered suggests that you are opposed to a formal apology. 
Well, Kerry, this is a very complex issue. It's a very sensitive issue. It, I continue to have great difficulty with the notion of intergenerational responsibility for the good or not so good things that were done by our ancestors. Is it really responsibility note, or is it simply saying that this was that there were elements of this saga that that represent a dark part of history and that some form of apology is deserved and is important as a piece of symbolism? Well, Kerry, my colleagues will hear what I th think about this tomorrow mm. when I speak to them directly. Uh, the nature of uh, leadership, particularly in the modern age with a 24-7 news cycle, is that at times decisions need to be made in consultation with my leadership colleagues. But there are some issues which go to the heart of the kind of society we are and the people we want to be, and my colleagues deserve the right to discuss that directly with me. That's how I feel about this issue, and it will be informed in part by Mr Rudd giving us some direction as to what it is precisely that we are likely to be asked to apologise for. And, and here's how the mainstream media is depicting your leadership on, on an apology. Sydney Morning Herald story uh, on your request to your party whips to find out what your colleagues are thinking before tomorrow's meeting, quote, headline, a sorry affair, Nelson in search of an opinion. A devastating cartoon in the Australian newspaper shows you standing alone uh, in the Australian desert with a sign pointing one way saying, sorry, 1,000 kilometres, a sign pointing in the other direction saying, not sorry, 1,000 kilometres, depicting you with a little tent as a township of one, and it says, welcome to Brendan, population one. And then, uh, then there's the Sydney Daily Telegraph showing you sitting on a curbside with a homeless person with the heading, one of these men is down on his luck with an uncertain future, the other is homeless. Past political history, I'm putting to you, would suggest that when a party leader suffers that kind of ridicule, uh, that his leadership is in trouble. Well, Kerry, uh, if I'm going to be ridiculed for actually asking my colleagues what they think and taking into account their views and the attitudes that they represent from the electorates from which they come throughout Australia, then you better get used to it. A particular media outlet ought to reflect upon. Dr Nelson, thanks for talking with us. Thank you, Kerry.